In this video, we're going to continue on with our fixed layout. And let's take a look at our web page for a moment here. And what we want to do is add a mini content panel in here to our main content panel. So it'll look like a tile. And people are doing that today, adding a lot of tiles in their content panels, and then people can drill down into those. Actually, the drill down actually involves master and content pages, and we'll get to that in a few videos. But before we get to that topic, we need to actually set up a mini content panel. So we're going to do that in this video. Now the first thing we want to do since this mini content panel is going to be within our main content panel, we want to nest that div inside our main content div. So we're going to create another div and I've already typed it out so we'll just copy and paste it and we'll put it right here and there you can see now we've got our box inside our main content panel. So again this will be our mini content panel right here. Now let's go ahead and put some content in here. So we'll just put a paragraph in here with some text. And again, I've already typed this out, so I'll just copy and paste it into here. And so here's the paragraph, which reads, in this series, we are going to cover ancient Rome. So this mini content panel will be a content panel about Rome. And so there you see, we've got our paragraph element with some content inside of our new mini content panel. So now let's go ahead and add some CSS so we can go ahead and style this new mini content panel. And we'll use the same formula. We'll put our nice comment section here that says this is a box. Actually, let's actually call this um, mini content panel because that's what this is. And then we'll add our CSS in here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste all the properties in here. Then I'll explain each one of them because I've already typed all these out. So we're going to have the background color set to a dark gray. And so there's the hex code. We're going to use a two pixel wide border. And so that's what I've got right here. We're actually going to put a little border radius in there to curve the edges. The font size we want a little bit smaller than the rest of the web page. So we're going to keep that at 95%. Um, we're going to add 10 pixels of padding. Remember that padding goes around our text, so we don't want that right near the edges. And we've talked about that in many of the other CSS tutorials. So we'll put some padding around our text. We're going to add a margin of 20 pixels. And you will remember that will push our div away from the edge of this div. So we don't want these right next to each other. So that's what the margin will do. We're going to have a width of 280 pixels. Now you can uh, resize this. If you're going to use this for your own website, you can resize this as you need be. Maybe you want this a little bit smaller, but we're going to use 280 pixels for this tutorial. And the color of the text will be white. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's see what we get now. Good. That's a good start. We've got our mini panel now, we've got our text, we got the padding to push away the text from the edge, and we've got some nice margin here that pushes it away from the main content panel's edge. So that's looking pretty good, but we wanna do a little bit more here. We wanna make this look a little bit more dynamic. So let's add an image into here, and then we'll make a link out of that image so that we can drill down into another web page, which as I said, we'll be doing later on when we do master and content pages. So let's go ahead and add an image now. We're gonna go right back into our box div and I've got this all typed out. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it in here. And we're gonna create another paragraph that will actually hold our image. Here's the other paragraph. So this will be our, actually our first paragraph. And uh, we're gonna create a class this time because we may wanna use this for other images. If we create other mini content panels, we may wanna actually reuse this class. So again, it'll be a class called test and we'll get to that in a minute. Now we're gonna create a link and you will remember from previous videos, we always use the anchor tag. Now target, we can keep blank. Now href, remember that's what we're going to link to. It's called roam.htm. Now here's where our content page will be. Now this is just a, a placeholder right now. This will be the name of it when we get to the master and content pages, but it's, it's gonna be called roam.htm. So that's what we're actually gonna go ahead and link to. But we obviously we're not gonna create that in this video. And here is our image, roam.png. Now I've already put that in the folder. Now if you want this actual image, if you go out to, uh, let me close this for a second, I wanna open this up with paint. But if you go out to Google and you type in ancient Rome, you'll see this down, I think halfway down or something, so you can use this image. Now, depending on the size of your content panel, you may need to reduce the size of it. I actually reduced it, I think like about 50%, or I think it was 75% to make the image smaller. Now, the reason we wanna do this in paint is because you wanna do all your image reduction 
in Microsoft Paint or in Photoshop, you don't want to use CSS to reduce the image because the image's original size will be sent to the browser and then the CSS will reduce it, but that's a lot of overhead. You don't want that type of overhead. So always reduce the images before they get sent to the client's browser. So again, I called it Rome, and so we're all set to go. And so now let's go ahead and actually take a look and see what we got. And there you can see this looking better. We've got our little hand here. So when we add our content page, we can drill down into it. And we've got our text, so it's all looking pretty good. But we want to center this image, don't we? We don't want this to be hanging on the left here. So let's go ahead and add some more rules. And we're just going to add it to our uh, class that we already created here, test. And so we can add some properties or rules here that will center our image. And so we'll go ahead and put it over here in our uh, CSS. And as usual, I already got it typed out, so I'll just copy and paste it over here. And uh, you know what? We don't need to create a comment section for that. We'll just we'll put it in here. Notice we're using the dot because it's a class. And as I said, we may reuse this to center other images and other content panels. So it makes sense not to make this a unique identifier. And you know what? We might have wanted to make this a class, but we'll leave this as a unique identifier for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a block. Remember, we need to convert this from uh, inline because remember that's the default for an image and we want to convert this to a block and then we just use the text align property to center it and we'll open this up and here you go whoa it didn't center it what did we do wrong oh boy okay let's close this out and <laughs> I always hate that when it doesn't work but we can figure out what we've done wrong let's always look at the CSS first and it looks good from this point of view. I don't see any problems. And then take a look at the HTML. And I spotted the problem. You guys see it? I don't know if you see it. There's an extra closing tag here, which we don't need. So we have an extra closing tag when we didn't need it. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. It's always something, right? All right, let's go ahead and see if it works now. Yes, it does. And so that looks really good. We've got our image now. People will read this little tidbit here to know that this is a drill down. We're even saying, please click on the image above. We'll click on that. So I will see you guys in the next video.